Hello class. Um, today we are going to demo uh, your foreshortening drawing for this week. And what your assignment is going to be is to draw your hand in perspective. So in other words, we're going to be utilizing foreshortening. Um, and I know some of you have been drawing your hands in your sketchbooks. Um, but this is going to be a more finished drawing for one, and uh, for two, you're not going to be doing any of this or this or any flat hand drawings. Um, so we have to use for shortening. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to assume kind of a claw-like hand posture. And I'm going to start sketching with a HB pencil. So it's about, it's a medium hard pencil, so it should give me um, fairly faint lines. And I'm going to start sketching quickly to just establish the shape of the hand, um, because then if my hand position changes, um, I'll be able to look at the drawing and get it back to the way it was. Okay, so after about 15 or 20 minutes, I've gotten a rough sketch. Uh, I've got all the, the contours at least outlined, and I'm checking it for proportion. So this is the best stage to do that at because once you start shading, um, it's a lot harder to, to change things and make, um, make more structural changes to your drawing. So, um, this is the best time to check it for accuracy. And, um, but once you get the, the hand sketched, then you can give your hand a rest. And um, that'll give you the opportunity to, to stand back, look at it from a different angle, and check everything over. So, once I have done that, and I've decided that it's accurate, um, then I want to start... Um, looking at the lighting and laying in my shadows. So I'm still going to keep using my HB for the moment because I, I want to just kind of lightly outline where my shadows are going to fall. So I'll try to get my hand back in the position that it was before. And then I'm looking for those form shadows and the cast shadows again. I'm using the side of the pencil. I'm holding it loosely in my hand. Um, this is not, you don't want to hold it like you hold a writing pencil. You, I'm holding it underhanded and just using the side to lay in roughly some values. Okay, I have some values laid in, so now I'm going to take another break, give my hand a rest, and I'm going to start moving uh, by increment towards darker pencils. So I started with an HB, 
And now I think I'll shift to a 2B. I'll keep going darker until I finish up with a 6B, which is the darkest one that I have in this set. So, um, now what I can do right now without even looking at my hand as a model is to go in and kind of darken and define some of these places where I know I'm going to need more value. So especially in the creases in my fingers, I know those are going to be very dark lines. So now that I've got most of my shadows established, I'm going in with the 6B, the big guns, as they say, and making sure that all of my shadows, especially in these creases, are nice and black. Because that's where I need my dark values the most. The closer you get to the final stages of the drawing, the more important it is <clears throat> that you have a sharp pencil. Um, because as you can see, now instead of drawing with it underhanded like this, like I was at the beginning when I was just roughing out the sketch, now I am holding it more like I would if I was writing. So that gives me a little bit more control over it. And I need to keep sharpening it to make sure that my details stay nice and crisp. I'll also see that instead of coloring with the pencil, as it were, um, I'm more often, towards the end stages, I'm hatching with it. I'm making tiny parallel lines. Which is also why it's important to keep a sharp pencil. Now again using the pencil a little bit more underhanded I am just going to fill in a little bit of a little bit of background value and if you don't get to this stage that's not as important I'd rather you focus on the hand um, but for me in order to make it feel more finished I need to put some value and to distinguish the subject clearly from the background and also to help a little bit with the foreshortening and the perspective. Now in between here what I've been doing is sort of like with our charcoal drawings taking my rag and blending some of these background values 
sort of just to save time because <clears throat> because it does take time to render smooth values um, so here I'm only doing it in the background I don't want to start smudging around in the hand where for now I want you to use just your pencil to control the values you can see that putting in that background value made the values in my hand appear very light and so that's one of the reasons that I did that is to um, is that once you create a context for this hand to exist in aside from just white paper then it's a lot easier to judge your values and determine how they match up with each other and how they relate to the background and so on so it has um, made it clear to me that I, I don't have a very full range of values going on here so once I get the value laid in a little bit better around in the background then I'll go back into the hand and start pushing the shadows back a little bit more. Okay, so for the purposes of this demo, it looks like I've probably gone far enough to give you the idea. Um, you don't have to rough out a background the way that I did, so if you just get the hand rendered, that's good enough to complete the assignment. So hopefully this has given you a good idea of how to use pencil as a medium, um, how to render your values, and how to draw um, the human body, or at least part of the human body, using foreshortening. So that's your assignment, and again, happy drawing!